Uh, my name is George Lewis, and the reason I'm the host this morning is I'm also the host on Saturday afternoon for the Roy Rogers Theater on Channel 45, where we have a uh, double feature Roy Rogers and a couple of chapters of uh, an old Republic serial every Saturday afternoon starting at 12 noon. Uh, in fact, right now we've got uh, an old Republic serial that Roy might remember uh, called SOS Coast Guard, stars a young fellow named Bella Lugosi. Uh, goes back a few years. Some of you from some of the radio stations I know are, are too young to have had uh, to have been living in those beautiful days when you clutched your dime in your hand on Saturday afternoons and headed for the neighborhood movie theater. You saw Roy Rogers' movie or two, a chapter of an old serial, and things were very, very nice. You got uh, if you had an extra dime, you get three candy bars, stop the drugstore on the way. And in those days, everything was either good or bad. There was no in between. Some of you are shaking your head. You remember? You're giving away your age. You got to be on the wrong side of 35 if you remember that. Now. But things were so simple and pleasant in those movies. There was uh, good guys and bad guys, and there was no question about who was who. And if you had any doubts, the good guys wore the white hats, and the bad guys wore the black hats, and it was just beautiful. It was kind of like a roller games on horseback. If you take a look at the information, please, almanac, as I did last night, uh, in the Who's Who in Entertainment, it says that Leonard Sly was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, I visited Portsmouth, Ohio, and they've got a place there called the Roy Rogers Esplanade, and they'll swear he came from there. But then so do half a dozen other towns around Ohio. So that's one of the questions perhaps we'll want to ask Roy when he gets up here. Roy's appearance here in Baltimore, we have the Five Star Foods Corporation to thank for that. General Paul Isaacs and Private Ed Isaacs. Uh, we thank them for making it possible for us to meet Roy Rogers. And let's welcome him right now, Roy Rogers. Well, time does pass pretty fast. And uh, I make a lot of personal appearances. We have. Uh, uh, question and answer uh, situations. Generally, in, an in, in the uh, middle of the show somewhere, we'll have a timeout for that, and uh, we get all kinds of questions asked. And uh, one time, I was uh, doing an appearance at a, one of the state fairs, and uh, at intermission, I had a little question and answer thing. A little boy, back in about the fourth row, he hollered up and he says, "Hey, Roy, says, how old are you?" And we always get that one of the first questions. I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll uh, give you a little problem. I said, I was what, 26 years old when I made my first picture, and that was 1938, you tell me. So he, about 20 minutes later, he held his hand up, he said, Roy, he said, I don't know how old you are now. I said, how old are you? He says, 29. I said, thanks a lot. <laughs> Just right. <twice. laughs> then another time, I, was, I have a museum out in Apple Valley where I have a collection of all of our stuff, mine and Dale, since we first started. I even have the old 1923 Dodge that I went to California in 1930 at the bottom of the Depression, and it's in there, and a lot of other things, triggers in the museum. And I was taking a bunch of close friends to explain to them what some of the things were uh, a while back, and uh, some other people joined us. And uh, while we got about three quarters of the way through, this lady came up and she says, Mr. Rogers says, I've been watching you since I was a little bitty girl. I said, well, that's wonderful, honey. How old are you? She said, 78. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did make my first picture in 1938. <laughs> and that is a long time ago. And the, the kids that were from uh, 6 to 12 at that time, that's the young, mother, young grandmothers and grandfathers and the fathers and mothers. And uh, of course, we've been in television, which catches the mothers, young mothers of today, and uh, in their late 20s. And now, wherever our uh, pictures are shown, we're getting the little ones. And the last year, uh, no, a couple years ago, we were in New Orleans with the opening of one of our restaurants, and we had about 10,000 kids out there. And so we had the little ones for throwing up the great grandmothers and grandmothers, uh, the grandfathers. So it kind of makes you feel good that people hang with you all, all the way through. And as a lot of you know, we have uh, a wonderful family. We, our whole life has been built around children. And when we made our Western pictures, they were made for the kids. They weren't made for the grown-ups. And uh, it was a healthy era, I thought. And uh, the kids had a hero that they could kind of look after and look up to and kind of follow. 
And it's too bad that we don't have an era like that now because uh, I think it's a healthy situation for kids. And uh, it's too bad. <coughs> and push, uh, as a lot of you know, I adopted quite a few children. And we had nine in all, but we lost three of them, like all families who've had a share of tragedies. And, uh, but we got six great kids, they're all married now, and I have 15 grandchildren. So, <laughs> that, uh, that'll answer some of your questions. So if you have any, we're gonna make this a question and answer thing, and I'll do my best to answer any question that you might have on your mind to uh, ask. Mr. Rogers, Gary Helton, WBJC. Uh, your new film coming up in the future, could you tell us something about that? Oh, well, uh, this is funny too. This was one of those fellows that were a young boy who grew up on my pictures and he became a Western buck. And he has a copy of every one of my pictures and anybody comes to his house now, they either got to watch Westerns or they don't see anything or they don't even get entertained. And he was very lucky and very talented. He came to Hollywood about 12, I think he said about 12 years ago, 10 or 12 years ago. And he, he'd written a lot of songs, and uh, he stood around on Hollywood and Vine for two years trying to get started. He finally recorded a couple of songs and started his own, raked up enough money to start his own recording company. And so, uh, just a few years ago, he sold out to Warner Brothers, sold his own company to them for two and a half million dollars cash. <laughs> so, uh, he came to me uh, about six months ago the first time, uh, he wanted to make me, and uh, we got acquainted. And he asked me if I'd be interested in making a picture. I said, well, it depends on the story. It depends on what it says and a few things like that. I said, some of the pictures they're making today, I wouldn't even want Trigger to watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he said, well, let me let me stick it around. So he came back about a month or so later and uh, had already got the thing started. So that's how it happened. And uh, Al Ruddy's supposed to produce the picture. He produced uh, Godfather. And I've met with him several times, and I've seen the outline of the, the first outline of the story. And it's supposed to be in the early 1900s. And really, I don't wear my hair like this all the time. But they told me not to cut my hair. <laughs> it isn't that I don't like long hair, but uh, I, uh, it just feels a little funny with this hat on, though. <laughs> and they told me we were supposed to start the picture May 15th. And now they sent it back to June 15th, so I'll be flattening my hair over that time. <laughs> But uh, uh, anyway, this is that's where it started. His name was um, Snuffy Garrett, <laughs> and he, uh, quite a guy. He's been very successful, successful in a couple or three uh, in producing and uh, also making pictures. And he also produces all of Sonny and Cher's uh, records. He's a real fine, talented young man. So is that okay? Is the movie a western? Huh? Is the movie going to be a western? Yeah, it's going to be a Western. And I, in fact, I got one of uh, Trigger Jr.'s Colts in training right now for the picture. I'm going to be riding one of them. It's Palomino. And Trigger's grandchild? Huh? Is that Trigger's grandchild? It's a, no, it's a Trigger Jr. There's no relation to Trigger, but it's a horse that I use on personal appearances a lot. And it's his, uh, his son. I have two of them, and uh, I sent one of them down to the, my trainer that worked with me all the time with Trigger. And uh, I picked the best one I thought, and he's come along real fine. He does a lot of tricks already. We probably won't even <laughs> use them in the picture, but uh, maybe I can use them for pictures or something. 